So when I was a Protestant and I would look at the Catholic Church, I would categorize Catholics in two categories. Either you were conservative Catholic or you were a liberal Catholic. And um, when I became... When I came back to the Catholic Church in my research, I, re I realized that was that was not the right way to look at it. And what I found is the truth is either you're an Orthodox Catholic, you assent to all the teachings of the Catholic Church, and assent means you accept as true all the teachings of the Catholic Church, or you're heterodox, you don't accept all the teachings of the Church. And... Uh, so, you know, conservative, liberal, that's like an American term uh, we use with politics. And I uh, mistakenly put it on Catholics. And then early on in this YouTube channel, I had a couple guests uh, who are Orthodox, who uh, I still to this day view as friends. Uh, when I had them on, I... Like, I was surprised at how many new subscribers I got because these were very popular guys. Uh, and then I heard uh, there were rad trads, which means radical traditionalists. So I tried to see, well, what was different between them and I? And we were both Orthodox. We accepted all the teachings of the church, uh, you know, uh, strong pro-life, strong traditional family. The Eucharist is the body and blood. You know, just basically just, we were, I said, well, we're just Catholics. I don't know where they, they come with that. And then someone said, well, they prefer the traditional Latin mass. I'm um, like, well, I know, um, you know, Orthodox that prefer the Novus Order, the, you know, the, the new mass that 90% of it goes. So I said, that doesn't make them radical either way, you know. Uh, and then the more and the more I, I studied it, I realized the difference was even these two gentlemen that I consider friends and good Catholics, um, they were very critical of Pope Francis. And um, although they didn't you know, come out and say anything heretical like Taylor Marshall and call the Pope a heretic or uh, they weren't set of a cantus like uh, Father James Altman and say the Pope isn't the Pope or the Pope is the Antichrist and the Pope should go to hell. Uh, but they were very critical of um, Pope Francis. So I've seen these people that are called rad trads. I don't know if they, you know, started that themselves or other people call them. The only difference I see in them is, for me, is they're very critical of the Pope. And, you know, words change over time. Uh, like the word naughty, for example used to mean nothing. It used to mean if you were naughty, you had nothing. You had zero. It comes from the word naught, nothing. And then it was thought that if you had nothing, if you had naught, you were bad. So you became naughty. So now what naughty means is, you know, before Rob met Jesus, he was a naughty boy. <laughs> so the word radical, uh, I think, changed in a lot of Catholic circles uh, to mean that you disobey the Pope because uh, you 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 disagree you you're very critical and it and it's a spectrum. There's those that are still Orthodox, like the couple guys I had on. They're still Orthodox because they're not set of a cantus um, and they've never called the Pope her, 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 heretic, which is her, heretical. The only person who gets to do that is another Pope, so you wait for the Pope to die. I mean that's clear in tradition and it's clear in church teaching. So I feel like that name's been changed. I don't know who changed it. If, you know, like they just, people that are considered rad trads just accepted it or if they came up with it. I actually haven't found the origins, to be honest with you. But the more I studied it, uh, the more I realized the people that are referring to as rad trads aren't radical because the most popular YouTuber, uh, Taylor Marshall, makes a living out of bashing the Pope daily, you know? And when I had these guys that were considered rad trads, I got a lot of subscribers. And then when I started to defend the Pope and say, no, the Pope didn't say that. And, you know, like, you know, um, famous one was Taylor Marshall said, the, the Pope said homosexuality is not a crime. 
And I said, and then and everyone says, oh, he's saying it's not a sin, you know, because he misled his believer, his followers to think Pope Francis said homosexual is not a sin. And I read the whole statement. Pope Francis actually said homosexuality is a sin, but it's not a crime. And he was saying that because he was talking to governments that were killing homosexuals. So he was trying to save life. Um, but he said it is a sin. And then, you know, I have, uh, you know, these telemarshal leading his people to believe that the Pope is going to bless same-sex unions. And over and over again, I quote the Pope, the church cannot bless same-sex unions because the church, because God cannot bless sin. And then you have telemarshal saying, oh, he's going to ordain women. And I point out, well, it was Pope Francis who changed canon law, canon law 1379, that now says, thanks to Pope Francis, if a bishop ordains a woman, uh, the uh, woman and the bishop are excommunicated. So, you know, we're called Pope Spiders for explaining what the Pope said, you know, and supposing that's a bad thing, explain what the Pope actually said and not what people are saying he said. <laughs> but anyway, whenever I do that, I lose subscribers. And um, my friend John, a Catholic for Rednecks, is the same thing. Whenever he defends a Pope, he loses a lot of subscribers. And I heard Michael Lofton on Reason Theology say the same thing whenever he defends the Pope. And, and you can see the emails, like it's, or the comments get nasty. But if you look on these popular guys uh, that bash the Pope, when they bash them, they get, I never see any disagreements in the comments. I see thousands of comments when, you know, that he called the Pope a heretic. Thousands of, you know, positive comments. You go there. Um, you even have priests, Father Jay Maltman, you know, come out and, uh, you know, call the Pope an Antichrist and pray during, during the rosary that he would go to hell. And he gets positive comments. This is what's popular. What's radical is defending the Pope. So I think I'm a little radical. I think John at Catholic for Rednecks is radical. I think Michael Lofton is radical. And, um, you know, as far as tradition, I look, for, I, you know, I, look, I looked far and back in tradition. And I don't see any layman or priest calling the Pope a heretic other than Martin Luther. <laughs> you know, I don't see any layman or priest calling the Pope uh, the Antichrist, other than Martin Luther. Um, I mean, this is what I find in tradition. Um, this is what I find in tradition. And this is what I, you know, I think is radical today. Um, you know, when St. Padre Pio was told he can't uh, say Mass and was punished unjustly, and we found out that it was unjust, the church was wrong, um, the person, a very close person to him writing his, uh, his biography said this, it was difficult. It was a difficult cross for him to bear, but he obeyed and submitted to the decree. The superior of the monastery read the Padre Pio the decree and the saintly friar responded, God's will be done. The will of the superiors is the will of God. And he had a bunch of Catholics that were protesting uh, this decree, and he scolded him. He said, you go home. The will of my superiors is the will of God. You obey the will of God. And he went, he was quiet. I think it was like 12 years. He couldn't say public mass. Now compare that to what they call radical. That's radical. That is radical. And that is tradition. Compare this priest they call radical, a radical tradition in James Altman. When he was told not to preach, he still preaches. He told not to wear a collar. He's still wearing his collar. Uh, he said, God damn, the bishops. I don't give a damn. This is his exact words. I don't give a damn what the bishops tell me to do. Big difference. You know, what they call radical traditionalists today are not radical and they're not traditional in my view. And then, you know, when I came back to the church, it was because I wanted to be in that church Jesus started. I wanted to be in that church that was like the first century. So I looked at what the first, second century Christians believed. And I found an amazing man, St. Ignatius of Antioch, the third bishop of Antioch. And if any of my Protestant friends are watching, it was the second bishop of Antioch, the man who succeeded the first bishop of Antioch, St. Peter, uh, St. Avodius, who coined the phrase Christian. Remember in the book of Acts, it says in Antioch is where they were first called Christians. That was Avodius. And then uh, Ignatius of Antioch succeeded him as a third bishop. And this is what St. Ignatius of Antioch had to say. And this is like 108 AD. So this is tradition. This is as traditional as you can get. 
See that you all, and I'm quoting him, his letter. See that you all follow the bishop, even as Jesus Christ does the father. And the presbytery, that's where we get the word priest from, as you would the apostles. And reverence the deacons as being the institution of God. And let no man do anything connected with the church without the bishop. Let that be deemed a proper Eucharist, which is administered either by the bishop or by one to whom he has entrusted it to. Wherever the bishop shall appear, there let the multitude of people also be. Even as wherever Jesus Christ is, there is the Catholic Church. It is not lawful without the bishop either to baptize or to celebrate a love feast. But whatsoever he shall approve of, that is also pleasing to God, so that everything that is done may be secure and valid. Moreover, it is an it is in accordance with reason that we should return to soberness of conduct. And while yet we have opportunity, exercise repentance towards God. It is well to reverence both God and the bishop. He who honors the bishop has been honored by God. He who does anything without the knowledge of the bishop does in reality serve the devil. Let all things then abound to you through grace. For you are worthy... You have refreshed me in all things, and Jesus Christ shall refresh you. You have loved me when absent as well as when present. May God recompense you. For whose sake, while you endure all things, you shall attain unto him. That's radical. That's traditional. Honoring your bishop. So, these guys that are really popular, making a lot of money, bashing the truth, the, 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 the church and, and Bastion, the uh, Pope, are not traditional, and they're not radical. What's radical are guys like me, Lofton, and Catholic for Rednecks that lose subscribers uh, and don't make any money doing this. But we defend the Pope anyway, because that's tradition. So I guess I have to confess I'm a radical traditionalist. God bless and stay Catholic.